For this recipe you'll need half a teaspoon of Himalayan salt or sea salt, one egg, one teaspoon of aluminum free baking powder, four tablespoons of olive oil, a quarter cup of nut milk or water, a cup and a half of spelt flour, tomato sauce, diced tomatoes, feta, diced yellow pepper, spinach, diced onions. You'll also need a whisk or a fork, two bowls, something to roll your pizza crust on, and a baking sheet. So this recipe for the spelt crust is actually by Joy McCarthy, a fellow nutritionist. It's one of my favorite recipes because it's very simple to make. Uh, and once you have spelt flour, once you purchase that, you can pretty much just whip it up and make a delicious, yummy pizza at any time. Yeah, I'm very excited to make this, so let's just jump right into it. Okay, so first what you're going to want to do is you're actually going to take all of your wet ingredients and put it into one bowl. Um, so the recipe calls for four tablespoons of olive oil. You're actually going to use only two of those tablespoons in here, and then the other two is going to be used later on. So make sure you separate those. So two tablespoons of the olive oil is going to go into this bowl. And olive oil is very nutritious and healthy for you. It has a lot of uh, beneficial fats that are good for your hair, your nails, your skin, and the cardiovascular system. Yeah, and so we're going to add one egg into, into that. We're just going to actually whip that up. You can put the egg first and whip it before you add the olive oil or whip it well there. Either way is fine. So you're going to whip that up and then you're going to take your quarter cup of nut milk or water if you don't have a nut milk. Um, but if you don't know how to make nut milk, we actually just did a video on how to make cashew milk. Um, so you can totally look at our video for that and learn how to make your own nut milk. It's very delicious. This is actually cashew milk that cashew milk that we made. Yeah, we together. just made it. So that's good. And uh, yeah, like we said, spelt crust is a lot more beneficial for you than just regular your flour crust. So it is an ancient grain and it's really good uh, because it's high in a lot of um, beneficial nutrients like protein and magnesium and niacin. So it's just, iron and zinc. Yeah. yeah, so it's really nutrient dense. Mm -hmm. um, if you're worried about gluten, it, if you're celiac, it does have gluten in it, just mm -hmm. to let you know. It does have less gluten than wheat though. So if you kind of are trying to decrease your gluten intake, you're not sugar sensitive, this is um, something that's good with nutrients and protein yeah. um, that has less gluten than regular wheat. Yeah, and ancient grains tend to irritate people who are a little bit sensitive a lot less, mm -hmm. if not, not at all, than um, just regular flour does. So yeah. It's really good. Um, so this is like one and a half cups of spelt flour. So I'm just going to add that in there. And then we're going to add our baking powder, our Himalayan sea salt, or Himalayan crystal salt. You can have sea salt if you want. Just make sure it's fine sea salt so it's just yeah. easier to put on. And fine it. Himalayan crystal salt. And we're going to mix that in together. And then we're just going to add our wet ingredients in there. And we're just going to stir that up. And if you find that your dough is looking a little bit too dry, you can just add a little bit more water if you need to. Um, but it, it should be like a dough texture. So wash your hands before you do this as well because you want to stir it up and then you kind of want to get your hands in there um, like you would with any other dough. Yeah, just like you're making a regular pizza. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of fun to get your hands in there and feel like you're Italian. <laughs> <laughs> feel like you're Italian. <laughs> so this dough is looking pretty well. It looks like it's got a little bit of um, too much flour compared to water. So I'm just going to add a tiny bit of water. Yeah. Just a bit so that it I get all that flour in there. I also like to keep water handy because um, it's good to put your hand put your hands in the water when you're pushing out the dough as well, so it doesn't stick to your fingers. It actually smells just like regular dough as well. Like I'm already feeling like we're gonna have a good pizza. Yeah, it's nice to find a healthy pizza. <laughs> I actually made this for uh, one of my clients, and they were so surprised. They absolutely felt found it was delicious. It's pretty small, and they're surprised how filling it was because it's actually. 
a very filling pizza. She, um, I made them two and they thought they were going to have to eat uh, both, but they texted me later and said, you know what, we only eat, ate half the pizza, we have leftovers for lunch, and it was so filling. That's good. Yeah, because ancient grains actually, because it's not so refined, uh, where they take out a lot of the nutrients, you're, you're getting a lot of the nutrients, and that's why you can make yourself a little bit more full, and it will keep you satiated for a lot longer. Yeah, protein and fiber will definitely help with that. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're gonna do is we're just putting a little bit of extra flour on our um, sheet here so that we can have it not stick. And we're just gonna kind of use our hands. You can use a rolling pin or you can just use your hands. Um, you can get your hands wet to make it a little bit easier to push that out. And you can make it to kind of however thick you want it and any kind of shape you want it, <laughs> technically. I usually go for just the round, usual pizza, but yeah. you can have some fun and make little pizzas, like for appetizers if you want it, because mm -hmm. it's your own dough. So you can make a many different little small ones, or you can make a bigger one. So it's, that's the nice thing about making your own dough, is that you can... Yeah, uh, and you can it. make it at any time. You don't have to, you know, use a lot of ingredients, because it's just very very simple you can use any ingredients that you want for the toppings as well and yeah, yeah so I'm just gonna take a little bit of oil oil or baking sheet put that on there and if you don't mind if you can just lift this up definitely. we'll put that down there Perfect. so we're just gonna take our dough and put it onto the pan um, you want to put it on the pan before you start putting all of your ingredients on there because it can be kind of tricky to yeah, slide it off. I've made that mistake before <laughs> actually a few times where I do the whole thing on there and then I have to slide it onto the baking sheet. But So now we're just going to roll up the crusts to give it some sort of crust edge. Nice. So I imagine can, you can actually stuff the crust. Yeah, you too, could. If you wanted to. But if I'm you wanted to. Right now. Yeah, you can see that it is pretty small, but um, can wet my hands here. Um, but yeah, it is really filling. Like it's surprising yeah. how filling this is. And it's pretty easy. You can see that we just made that crust in no time. Yeah. And if you're worried about it baking because it's a little it doesn't have as much gluten as normal um, flours do, it actually bakes very, very well because it does still have a little bit of gluten, it's just not as refined. Yeah, it does bake really well. Um, yeah, and I, I don't really notice the difference too much, but. Yeah. So we're gonna take some tomato sauce and just spoon that on there and spread it around. Yeah, you can make your own uh, tomato sauce. We will definitely be having a video on how to make your own tomato sauce coming up soon, or you can just buy your own tomato sauce. They have lots of really delicious ones on the market. Yeah, so when you're looking to buy your own tomato sauce, um, the best thing to do is look for organic, of course, mm -hmm. and always, always read the ingredients. Because even though it says organic on the front, doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be healthy for you. Yeah. Make sure you look for added sugars in the ingredients list. There's no need to really have added sugars in mm -hmm. your tomato sauce. So it should be just whole ingredients that mm -hmm. you can pronounce, that you know what they are, and there's no cane sugar yeah. or, or any sugar in the tomato sauce, because okay. it really shouldn't have that. Definitely. And like, like I said, we're definitely going to make one for you. So... Just stay tuned for that and you can add that to your pizza. Yeah, so once you've done that, um, we're using onions today. Um, we're doing a vegetarian pizza. Usually I'll do um, some ground, extra lean ground chicken that I've cooked before and I'll put that on there or some slice of chicken or ground turkey or ground beef, whatever you have. Um, you would fry that before you put it on the pizza um, and some salt and pepper or whatever seasoning yeah. you like. So that's actually really delicious. But today we're just going to be doing a, a vegetarian pizza Simple. So it's simple and easy mm -hmm. and with the ingredients we actually just had in our fridge. So this pizza is really great because you can use any ingredients that you have in your fridge. Um, we just happen to have these ingredients so that's why we're making these. Yeah. You don't have to use onions or yellow peppers. You yeah. can use red peppers, green peppers, whatever you have. Um, yeah, that's the, way, that's the beauty of making your own pizza. So we'll just throw these on there. This looks delicious already. And you can also tell that we have um, as it happened from just what we had in our fridge, we have different colors. So we have yellow, green, red. So all these different colors will be providing us lots of different nutrients. Yes. So it's really good to try and um, add at least three different colors into your yeah. each meal. So you so know your... Eat the rainbow. Of, yeah, exactly. Rainbow. <laughs> it is really true. 
So we'll add some spinach. Yeah, you can add some arugula as well. That would be very delicious. But yeah. spinach is so good. Or even basil, whatever you want. Yeah, to basil add. would be really nice. And then we're gonna add some diced tomatoes. Mm. Baked tomatoes are so delicious and they're very healthy for you. When you actually uh, cook tomatoes, it does release a lot of the lycopene and you actually absorb more of the nutrients. So it's very good. And then we have some crumbled feta that we're just gonna throw on top. And there we go. And you might as well just put all of it on there. I know, I was just thinking like, <laughs> it's just so good. I love feta. I'm a feta person. And there you go. You have a very delicious and nutritious pizza. Yeah. So you're going to take this pizza and you're going to put it in your oven at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes or until the, um, the edges should be like crispy brown and you should be able to cut right through it. Um, I like my pizzas a little bit crispier, yeah, so they're, they're very it's a better. So yeah, there you go. We're Easy gonna way. Yeah, we're gonna pop this in the oven, and we'll see you in 20 minutes when it's done to show you the final product. So we just took the pizza out of the oven, and this is what it will look like. Uh, we're just gonna go and enjoy a piece. Thank you so much for watching our video, um, and this is the final product of our pizza. A little bit of a disclaimer. Do you want to tell them the disclaimer? <laughs> yeah, okay, so we said um, cook the pizza at 350 degrees. Uh, whoops, it's actually 425, yes. sorry. Um, slipped on that one. So definitely cook your pizza at 425, otherwise you'll be cooking it for a pretty long time for it to get crispy. So 425 degrees for 20 minutes. Yes. Um, another thing is, is we had put aside that two tablespoons of oil. Um, we did use some of the oil on the pan, but you do want to take the oil to glaze the crust before mm -hmm. putting any of the toppings on. It's really good to put the oil, you just take it, you can put it with your fingers yeah. or a, a brush and glaze over the crust, um, the whole crust with the oil. It kind of makes yeah. it less dry before and... Before you put on the topping. Yeah, so before yeah. you put on any pizza crust or, mm -hmm. I mean not pizza crust, the pizza sauce yeah. and the toppings, completely glaze the whole thing with olive oil um, slightly and then put the toppings on. It will help seal everything and yeah. make and, it delicious. Yeah, and make sure that it's not you know, dry or anything, but we did it halfway through because we cooked it for a little longer, obviously, because we didn't do it at the right temperature. Yeah. <laughs> so just make sure you do it at the right temperature. Um, and, and glaze it. Yes, but it's still very delicious. Yeah. So thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in our next video. Yeah. Bye. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Oh, my yeah. God, that's so good. Mm -hmm. mm. That's amazing. See? You actually didn't need, like, you I don't think you need seasoning. 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 No, it's delicious because mm -hmm. of the pizza sauce. It was really good because it was it's like so oregano. Right. This is delicious. I want another piece of it. Oh, <laughs> I